April 26, in 1986, uh, the explosion and uh, the accident in, in the Chernobyl power plant happened. The reactor exploded and uh, spreading lots of radioactive dust uh, through the uh, adjacent forest, uh, town of Pripyat, and uh, on and on further. Um, uh, scientists say all the way to Europe. Everybody's gonna scared and the government has nothing to do than just seal the whole area with um, uh, army forces and uh, they let nobody in until some solution and information is found. A couple of years passed. In 2008 they show up mutants and uh, weird creatures and animals and people could see also natural calamities and weird kind of uh, activity there like um, weird lighting and uh, earthquakes and some explosions. There are several types of anomalies, uh, gravitational anomaly and uh, um, uh, like burning fluff and uh, invisible energy concentrations. So all of that um, is, is a top risk for the player. But actually, any creature trapped or character trapped into uh, the anomaly is nearly certainly dead straight away, can be tear, torn apart. They took uh, lots, lots of photos, hundreds of photos uh, that were just you know, very impressive, very, very unique ones. And these photos we use as textures. Like they would photo a, a building in, in Chernobyl or uh, like a little dwelling, a rotting one, and uh, they would uh, like take detailed, very detailed photos that can be used as textures. So actually, uh, the textures that you, you see in the game are real textures from Chernobyl, from, from, from those villages, from those buildings, which make the atmosphere really uh, authentic in a way. And we even got inside the houses and uh, inside those blocks, blocks of flats and we could see um, newspapers dated like April 1986 lying on the floor, lots of trash there and we went to those, um, it's like back to USSR, everything silent, uh, lots of those communist leaders portraits and since then we've got lots of support from uh, even the officials, the authorities at the Chernobyl power plant, they helped us out with documentaries, with information. Uh, we remodeled the, the sarcophagus in the game and it, we created a very, pretty much realistic and very sophisticated 3D model of that. The idea of us actually putting uh, this main character, the player, into a hostile world and make him uh, to create a different kind of perception of gameplay, not very standard for, uh, for an FPS game, since you're not uh, like a god there to kill pretty much everyone, but you're very vulnerable and you're just an element of that world who needs to survive. There are several factions uh, which are coordinated and which are led by this A-Life mechanism, starting from like bandits who just mug and rob stalkers and who are against uh, pretty much everyone in the, in the zone. Uh, there are several clans and, uh, of, of stalkers and they would be uh, detected by different like uniform. Well, in each of those groupings they have their own philosophy in the game. So they have uh, their own reasons to be there. Some of them uh, sort of cooperate, some of them are rivals. And uh, in the game, the player actually has a chance to join one of those uh, factions and be part of that. However, the player can also be a lone wolf and play uh, independently or be just uh, against anybody, which is probably the toughest. Uh, if you're against everybody, it's the toughest path. Uh, you also have a chance to do, to do that. Uh, so we wanted to give the player as initially as much freedom as possible and uh, to make the decisions uh, play his kind of role there and ultimately reach his own ending in the game because every decision and every 
action will contribute to the, to the ending the player will find in the game.